Hello, good day, and welcome to your Physical Education 3A. So, my name again is Virgilio June Tingson. You can call me Sir June. And this is the official opening of our topics, our lessons for this pre-midterm. So, this course is all about first aid and water survival with disaster waste reduction. Then, our pre-med content are lesson one, disaster and disaster race, with a lesson objective that by the end of this lesson, the student or you student would, must be able to, number one, explain the basic concept about disaster, disaster risk, and vulnerabilities, and what are the differences between the three. Next, you have to determine the various elements vulnerable to that disaster, then last one, we have to identify the capacities that can help reduce the disaster risk and losses. All right, so we have lesson two, we have vulnerability of the Philippines to the disaster. We are going to find out why Philippines is visited by devastation and uh, diluvio or disaster such as um, typhoons uh, in bigger scale then earthquakes, tsunamis, and also monsoons or heavy rains. In lesson three, we have the hazard, which is the last topic for the pre midterm So let's identify what are the man-made, what are the natural, and how we'll be able to assess hazard that can prevent further damage if disaster is going to uh, visit or come through to our community. First, we have the disaster. We practically deal with disaster, and there are circumstances that go against our favor. Failed exam presentations that unexpectedly turn out to be badly or missed interview because of the traffic, because of the flood, and of course because there is no electricity. Then, uh, however, disaster brought by typhoon, earthquake, landslide, and other natural human-made hazard cause bigger damage not just individual but also in the community as well and take a look at some accounts about two of the strongest consecutive typhoons that hit the country like yolanda and typhoon odette disaster it is a serious disruption of the functioning of the community or society causing widespread human material economic and environmental losses which exceed the ability of the affected community to cope using its own resources. So, lahiran ang disaster, ngayon yung personal disaster, na po disaster in real and bigger scope, such as serious disruption of functioning to the community. Why? Because, because of the loss of the property. Then, the society, because of the uh, many are injured, and sometimes, uh, unfortunately, some are the victims of casualties or death. Then material, uh, because of the disaster, uh, there are some crops that can't be uh, used or utilized because of the damages, like rice, like coconut. For example, the after or death, that there is a scarce in coconut. Uh, production. Then economic, since uh, there is uh, damage also to the stores and to the source of our needs, then we have difficulty in producing income. Then of course the environmental losses, like for example damages of trees, damages to the animals, and damages to the life form in the seas, and also some birds, and also any other uh, members of the environmental factor. Then let's watch this video. Lord! Lord, maawa ka! Kamade! Kamade! Ay, sit down! Daka lang! Daka lang! Wala pa yan! Oh, yamo! Yamo! Tidak ada lagi, tidak ada lagi. 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 Tidak 
Tigilaw, wag ka maling. Lord. Lord, please. Right, that are some of the photos taken after the storm or typhoon or that. All right. So disaster risk. What is disaster risk? It is the probability of harmful consequence or expected losses, such as deaths, injuries, livelihood, assets, or services, resulting from the interaction between natural or human-induced hazard and vulnerable conditions. The conventional approach whenever a calamity occurs is managing its aftermath, which is very reactive, as one takes action only after where risks are reduced and damaged. For example, how can the rescuers go, uh, go to their post if there is an ongoing uh, storm. Uh, they can be, or it can be that before the days, they were going to announce, then transfer the rest of the community to the evacuation center. That is the proactive. So reactive is during the time that the storm occurs. So probably the rescuers are also in safe mode. So they're not going around the city while there is a 300 or 550 kph of wind gusting the streets. The risk can be high, medium, or low, depending on physical, environmental, and social economic factors. For example, communities along the river banks have high risk of flooding. On the other hand, communities in the upland Areas have low risk of flooding, however, high risk in landslide. It is important to note that the risks are independent, I'm sorry, and dependent on vulnerabilities and other factors such as hazards, capacities, and exposure of people to hazards. Vulnerability. It is a condition determined by physical, social, economic, and environmental factor or process which increase the susceptibility of the community to impact of the hazard. What do you mean by susceptibility? It is the how much or how a person or individual or a thing is affected or hardly affected by the disaster. It is the extent to which a community, structure, service, or geographical area is likely to be damaged or disrupted by the impact of the particular hazard on account of its nature, construction, and proximity of hazardous terrain or disaster-prone area. For example, even though your house is strong or sturdy, but it is resided near the river banks or just right with, within 50 meters uh, away from the shoreline, then the disruptability is really high. 
The element at risk include persons, building, crops, and other components exposed to the known disaster hazard and which are likely to be adversely affected by the impact of this hazard. The following are the different types of vulnerability. One is physical and environmental vulnerability. It refers to the human-made environment of buildings and infrastructure and the natural environment of agriculture, forestry, and aquaculture. The factor determines the magnitude of the physical vulnerability are the following. Number one, geographic pattern of the severely uh, severity of the hazards. For example, Philippines as being in the west a western part of the Pacific is really high susceptible in receiving or welcoming uh, like 20 or 10 to 20 uh, typhoons per year because of its geographical location. The next is exposure of the elements to the hazard. For example, those people who are living in the riverbanks are susceptible in river flooding and those who are living in the shoreline are susceptible in uh, tidal flood and those who are living in the mountains or in the lap of the steep mountains susceptible to the landslide and those who are living in the fault line are susceptible to are susceptible or greatly affected by the earthquake. See geological and environmental characteristics of the community. Then D, effects of the local condition. So how the how oh, the situation where uh, the people or the community is uh, the community is uh, the situation where the community reacts or move after the impact of the uh, disaster. Social vulnerability refers to the susceptibility or how the uh, community be affected by the disaster. The social institution, organization that ensures the sustenance of the families, communities, and society. The factors affecting so social vulnerability are the following. Number one is Edu I mean, number one is categories of vulnerability group of such as women and children, people with disability and elderly, chronically ill person, indigenous people, the lesbian, the gay, bisexual, and transgender sector, among others. So, especially those who are disabled, elderly, and chronically ill person. So they are really high susceptible because of the restrictive movement, because of the condition. Uh, indigenous people, because they have strong beliefs that uh, they have to take care of their own land. So naiuban yung pabilin lang jud nga to, bisag na nasa ibabaw sa fault line, because they believe that they are the steward of the uh, places that they are living in. Then, letter B, we have the educational attainment. So, the more uh, the more you are equipped or instilled with knowledge, the more you are highly, uh, highly probable of surviving such a uh, disaster. Number, letter C, we have knowledge and awareness, the same as educational attainment. C, or D, we have the location and type of housing. For example, uh, you're living in an old, uh, in an old and non-concrete house uh, near the fault line. So it's, it will be easily destroyed by magnitude of six or five uh, earthquake. Then we have the population density. Then you have perception of risk because uh, this is all about how you are aware, how you are getting true or truthful information. Uh, it will going to change or matter on your perception of the risk. F, we have values and tradition. Uh, then G, or last one, is absence of local institutions. So how is your locality capacitated 
after an impact of a disaster, like how many are there, or, or is there a, any established rescue team, or risk reduction uh, management people who are going to man the community during, before, during, and after disaster. The economic vulnerability pertains the assets and resources of the community that are susceptible to disaster, including the production, distribution, and utilization of economic vulnerability are the following. Number one, A, sources of livelihood. So, possible if there will be a category 4 or 5 storm going to hit your community, the livelihood will be surely affected as it will cause damages to your crops or to your livelihood. B, community resources. Community resources, uh, how capacitated your community in uh, rebuilding, in preventing, and also in resilience. So is your community, Dali na magtinabangay or lagyo pa sila then maglisod o uh, go to places from one place to another place. See, household incomes and savings. So, if you are poor or if you have below uh, or you're within poverty or below level, then you have the less or you have hard time in re I mean Pagbangon or recoiling, or uh, you have hard time in uh, uh, standing up again and go on with your life because as of now, dilik na ta ma buhi o di takajod daghan o kwarta. Okay, tanan man, kay almost tanan na ay palito na. Then we have market access to goods and services. For example, during a debt, the tagkan kayong mga roads na na blocked sa koan, sa mga trees and debris. Lisod kayo access sa market where the goods and essentials are both. Next, we have capacity. The opposite of vulnerability is capacity. It is the combination of community strengths, characteristics, and resources that can be utilized to achieve certain goals. So, na ay community threat masama siya is dili na bas sila dili 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 pa sila dili ma mentally affected if ever na ay mga dilubio or challenges that may come to their way so they were able to resist the negative impact characteristic so ang characteristic o sa may characteristic sa strong person is that in every darkest situation, he will always uh, find a little light in the end of the tunnel. Very optimistic, very hopeful, so he is ready to move on. And he is also, he or she is ready to counter whatever negativity that is uh, facing in, along the way. And the resources, of course, kung naatay mga, ex, mga extractor, nga mga uh, tracks or mga equipment materials na atay mga uh, bako, matay mga people included people as a resources nga mo tabang during the aftermath so they are the ones who are making the community capacity as strong as they can so there are capacities which can be mobilized to aid recover from disasters so this is six Table 1.1, a table of comparing specific vulnerabilities and capacities. So, at the top of the row, there are types, elements, vulnerability, and capacity. For example, physical. So, sa may mga physical, mga tangible or mahikap na mga element like infrastructure. So, uh, infrastructure, ma vulnerable si ja if substandard pagkahimo, ang design ni ja is not uh, waterproof built or dili si ja. Uh, earthquake na uh, resistance, mo na vulnerability or dali na ma-affected. Naapod tayo, 
capacity? Is it hazard proof, construction, and design? Another one is environment. The element is forest land. Then, my vulnerable losses are if the forest or is deforested or deforested and the areas that can cause erosion. Then, the capacity is forest covered with sustainable ecological system. So, that can survive ng mga life forms nato. Social, knowledge, and awareness. So, atong vulnerability is lack of education, ignorance, not an excuse, beliefs that can be caused harm and induce vulnerability. Kay, you know, dilibiyaan ang atong balay, kay tungod kay kaning hinatag pa ni Lolo, yung aning ana. So, pag igo ni Odat, nabilin sa balay, naango, naangul na hinoon. The capacity. Capacity for social is adequate understanding of and training sa DRRM. So, kay baw na uh, sa mga pros and cons, if if mapabilin sa balay or usay may kay baw na sa usay mga possible things to do uh, before, during, and after a disaster. Then, the economic, we have the family income. So, the vulnerability about this is the low-income family. So, katong mga poor, yun, o kanang mga poverty level, this would recover. Then, the capacity, non-poor with savings, ganong strength man sila because either makatabang sila sa ilang silingan ng mga poor. Then, the livelihood, mga vulnerability if sources of livelihood that is highly susceptible to hazards such as fishing, which is disrupted when there is a storm. So, mga fishermen during the storm was sa income. Then, capacity, uh, sources of living with low susceptibility to environmental changes and hazards. So, naasidzay mga segways or mga racket-racket lain source of income. So, dapat, guys, as much as possible na amoy mga other ways in uh, sources sa income. Summary, the lesson discusses the following salient points. Number one, disaster is a serious disruption of the functioning of the community or society causing the widespread losses which exceeds the ability of the affected community to cope using its own resources. Number two, Disaster is probability of harmful consequence or expressed or expected losses resulting from interactions between natural or human-induced hazard and vulnerable condition. Number four, or number three, I mean, disaster risk reduction is proactive approach that aims to manage risk even before a calamity occurs. So, proactive proactive approach it means that before the storm is signaled to hit your area uh, the people from the RRM already uh, coordinating with the community leaders or the barangay leaders or captains or the mayor or the officials of the city or municipality regarding prevention of further damage in case the storm will hit then number 4 vulnerability is a factor it's a condition determined by factors or process in which the susceptibility of the community to the impact of disaster. On the other hand, capacity is combined strengths of the community that can help in reducing and managing disaster risk. The types of vulnerability are physical and also environmental, social, and economic. We have lesson two, vulnerability of the Philippines to the disaster. So, in this lesson, we will going to know why Philippines is a hard hit location for disaster, such as storm, monsoon rains, like uh, earthquakes, landslides, like that. The lesson of the is by the end of the lesson, the student must be able to explain why the Philippines is very vulnerable to disasters. Number two, relate poverty to vulnerability and disasters. And number three, explain why disaster is a social phenomenon. So last 2013, October 15, Bohol was hit by 
uh, 7.2 magnitude, the center of it is in Carmen, Bohol. So both uh, infrastructure, like the vertical, like the church, municipal hall, city hall, uh, market, they are all destroyed. Some are severely, some are little only. And some of the horizontal infrastructure, like the road, bridges, are also affected. Yolanda, the strength of the typhoon rendered their effort useless and resulted in 6,201 dead and 1,785 missing and 28,626 injured. While we hope for fewer disasters to happen in the future, the reality is that the number has been increasing. It is maybe because of the increase of se severity and also the quality of the disaster that is hitting a community like Yolanda, like Oda. Philippines is a disaster prone. The location of the Philippines in the Pacific makes it very vulnerable to meteorological disturbance such as typhoon. The Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration or PAGASA state that around 19 to 20 typhoons enter the Philippine area of responsibility every year. When the track of the typhoon of from 1948 to 2010 are traced on the map, one can see that Philippines is always on the path. That's why it is called the typhoon belt. With the climate change, more climate-related disaster can be expected. The 2014 World Waste Report sees the Philippines as the second country that is most at risk to the disaster that we brought about the climate change. Next is Vinasu, and this is this information is from Alliance Development Work 2014. Some areas of the Philippines which is used to be safe from storms such as Western Visayas and Northern Mindanao have become typhoon ridden because before glass. During the 1990s, it was the Batanes and Baboyan Islands the always typhoon belt. But now, nowadays, or recently, it is now the Western Visayas, Southern Luzon, and the Northern Mindanao have become the typhoon ridden or typhoon belt. Typhoon Frank hit Iloilo in 2008, while Typhoon Sendong devastated Cagayan de Oro and Iligan City in 2011. But guys, during the 90s and 80s, those areas were not uh, commonly hit by storms. The Philippines is also located in the western rings of the Pacific area or Pacific Ocean, where many active falls and trenches and volcanoes can trigger the earthquake. <clears throat> The Central Luzon earthquake in, is the strongest experience in the country. Mga 1990s ni katong na ay uh, build na building sa bagyo nga na hugno with lots of people trapped and died inside. Following the 2015 Nepal earthquake, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology Philvox, the government agency responsible for forecasting volcanoes eruption and earthquake, released the Valley Fault System Atlas. The maps highlight the cities, municipalities, and barangays along the fault line in Metro Manila, Rizal, Bulacan, Cavite, and Laguna that could be affected by the big one. This earthquake, which may have a magnitude of seven and above can happen anytime there is no certain or exact schedule when this uh, magnitude earthquake will strike in a community study shows that if this occurs in metro manila it can result on the following damages we have the uh, row above is earthquake scenario then Next is the West Valley Fault to 7.2 magnitude or the possible or projected um, earthquake. So, well, uh, for example, in residential building, there will be 175,600 will be damaged, then 348,100 partially damaged. 
So that's 26.2%. For the population, there's a possible or projected 338,800 will be dead and injured of 118,200. The fire will broke to 500 in the community or in the affected area and there will be seven bridges that will fall up full up so what will happen for example if ngadto mo ma tudong sa bridge diba so at least uh the best ways to have or have the people equipped with knowledge skills and how to escape or how to or what to do the right attitude or what to do during the disaster and also, and the rest are uh, there in the table. Many active volcanoes in the country also pose dangers to our communities. The historical Mount Pinatubo eruption in 1991 burned crops killed 722 people, left more than 200,000 homeless, and affected the weather around the globe. So this one... Uh, very massive eruption like in 1991 in Zambales. So I've been there last 2015. We visited the crater. So it took us like four hours to go there, like three hours walk. No, three hours ATV, one hour walk. Poverty and vulnerability. The poor usually have lesser access to better homes, public facilities, and livelihood opportunities which make them vulnerable disaster. This is an example of disaster risk poverty nexus. The 1.5 figure shows the relationship between disaster risk and poverty. There are conditions at the local and global levels that place people and communities at greater risk. These risks are also driven by poverty. As disaster impact vulnerable sector, these cause damages in their economic and social life, thus, thus pushing them to worse condition. The unequal location and distribution of resources also contribute to their situation. For example, if you live in the outskirts of the community or Lailayan, you will be probably receive a lesser benefit compared to that in the near of the metro. Then, kanila bang nasa lugar sa mga outskirts or mga vulnerable area, poverty area, mapoy maapiktuhan ka adyo sa disaster. In 2009, in 2009, in 2009, Typhoon Ondoy affected people from all socioeconomic groups in Metro Manila. What they mean by all socioeconomic groups? Even the richest, the rich, the middle class, and the lower class, and the lowest class were affected. Homes were damaged and possessions were lost. The rich families were able to recover quickly. They have the option to live in another pro property they own, like condominium, highland, highland residential, then stays in a hotel or have their own houses renovated. Unfortunately, the poor families had to move to evacuation center or stay in their flooded homes. They also had to endure the loss of what little they had. Two months after the disaster, some were still staying in the evacuation center that are flooded also due to the expansion, <coughs> expansion of the Laguna de Bay. <coughs> Disaster as social phenomenon. While disaster is mainly caused by natural hazard and has physical effects, it is also a social phenomenon because natural events have a social consequences. Only as a result of an action of human beings and societies. By Danes, 1992-15. Everybody will always have a story to contribute affirming the social attributes of disaster in the community. The social aspect of 
<clears throat> the social aspect comes from the people's action before, during, and after disaster, as well as the existence of vulnerable people and communities. Here are the points to further prove this point. <clears throat> Number one, harmful practices worsen vulnerability of a disaster. In the production of goods and services, <clears throat> people often ignore the disaster risk involved. For example, it is very alarming that massive construction is allowed in reclaimed areas such as the Manila Bay or Manila Bay, deforestation, quarrying, mining operation, and other practices that led to environmental degradation also contribute to this problem. As observed here in Maasin City, if padong mo sa Maasin gikan mo sa Batalon, nakabantay mo nga na yung daghan na nakutkot nga excavators nga to sa kilid sa bukid. Kay gibalhin ang mga anapog or kanang mga marble marble element nga mga stones and mga boulders. Gibalhin nga to gihimo sa dagat o murag dako nga reclamation area or kanang Monasiza og reclamation area, monasiza og kanang diversion road. So the sooner or later, ang ato mga kabukinan sa kilit sa dalan ay ma upaw na. So are you happy with that? Anyway, let's continue. The population growth, shortage of land have further pushed low income families to worse living condition which make them more vulnerable to disasters. They usually live in marginal lands such as riven, steep slope, or even riverbeds and banks. So, kana mga rivers, slopes, riverbeds, and banks. In both urban and rural communities, it is not surprising to hear about babies falling into the waters because their houses protruded over the river or of cluster of lightly constructed houses being washed off by the strong current. Napoy uban niya dali rajud ma gabuk or brittle because some part of their houses are submerged in the water. The poor, the elderly, people with disability or special need indigenous people women, children, and communities marginalized by exploitation of natural resources end up as a victim of disaster as they are most vulnerable group. In addition, human-made disaster also place people in greater misery. These or the displaced community caused or caught in armed conflicts are forcefully placed in hamlets, like those areas who are affected by the exchange of bullets and bombs of the communists and also the authorities. There are also the demolished and dislocated settlement, the victim of arson done to clear the land of squatter and the struggling peasants being disposed of their land or give away to land conversion. Yes, uh, Kabantay mo nga ng sunod-sunod o nai na sunod-sunod ang sunog sa mga squatters areas like in the populated rich Manila or Cebu City, possibly nai arson. But I, I am not directing, directing or uh, accusing firmly nga nagig arson. But there's a possibility kay nga mang sa informal settler or what we call squatters area kasagaran ng start ang fire and more reach siya of level 4. So it means nga mga ang mga neighboring barangays are also reached by the fire. The aftermath of disaster paves the way of disasters <clears throat> paves the way for disaster prevention effort. Disasters encourage people to collaborate in addressing the roots of disaster risk, engaging in volunteerism, and building the resilience and community. Inventions at the macro and local level have to be undertaken by not pursuing development activities that contribute to the greater risk.
So, manang uban yung area nga dool o quarrying possible nga mag-flooding. So, wala na may mo sip sa water. So, wala na may trees. The summary. The lesson discusses the following salient points. The Philippine is very vulnerable to disaster because of its location. Disaster affects all people. However, it is the poor and other vulnerable groups who suffer the most. 3. Disaster is considered a social phenomenon because of the people or the existence of the people's action before, during, and after disaster as well as the existence of the vulnerable people and community. And now, let's go to the hazard. The lesson objective for this particular lesson is, by the end of the lesson, he or the student must be able to identify hazard and the various types of hazard, explain the different methods of doing hazard analysis, and demonstrate skills in doing hazard analysis. Knowing hazard. What is hazard? Hazard are potentially damaging physical events, phenomenon, or human activities that might cause injury or loss of life, damage to property, social and economic disruption, or environment degradation. Guys, kanang ipo ipo or water spout, it is a hazard. The storm itself, the wind of the storm reaching 100 to 300 kph per hour, is a hazard. It is also a hazard ka ng slippery nga area sa inyong office. Mga cause of accident. And also, people who are living behind or beside the riverbanks. It's very hazardous to live there. The general kinds of hazard are natural hazard, hazard that are induced by humans, and hazard that are planned by humans. Natural hazards are beyond human control. For example, are hydrometeorological and climatological hazards that are samples are storms, typhoon, uh, hurricane. Hurricane kung nakas U.S. So, bagjo kung nakas Pilipinas. B. Geological hazard. For example, uh, shifting of the tectonic plates leading to the earthquake or tremors of the land. C is biological hazard. For example, in the hospital, um, trashes are disposed according to the category. And one category there is hazard or biochemic, I mean, biohazard that are contained with, um, that are contained with, uh, soiled linens and clothes of the uh, patient with communicable disease. We, just, we also have like swine flu and also the bird flu and the anthrax in my biological hazards. Next is astronomical hazards. Another biological hazard are the Pyroclastic ashes from the volcanoes. Monang, they should wear a uh, mask to the areas near the eruption of the volcanoes. We also have astronomical hazards like uh, this one. Uh, asteroid is about to hit some area in the surface of the Earth. Like that. Has number two are the hazards induced by humans maybe due to accident, carelessness, or inability to implement protective measure. Number one is fire. Usually, mga bata, maluduwa, dyan na pa dyan sa maluduwa o kanakandila. Na ila pa dyan balay is not concrete. Why firewall? It's possible. Suno. B, industrial and technological hazard. For example, mixing chemicals in the laboratory of industrial place then they explode. Then see hazard related to high risk recre recreation activities such as mountain climbing and 
mountain climbing. Mountain climbing, marathons, diba? You have to cross to the seas, can I carry it? That's also hazard. Then, other hazard, hazardous activities. For example, firecrackers. Basig mo reach sa mga communities, busod sa balay, mabuto. Free hazard are something or sometimes deliberately planned by people because of personal or political interest, resulting in massive loss of lives and properties. Number one is arson. Mato nga, if developer ka sa, sa ka lugar, then it was settled, settled by the informal settler or mga squatter, there is a possibility that you're going to hire someone who will going to set a fire or explode or plant an explosion there. So, number two, I mean, letter B, terrorism. Terrorism, for example, uh, conflict between uh, the Communist Party in the Philippines, like NPA, versus the government or the authorities, like the Philippine Army. And there's a community in between that is affected or na community nga gi uh, sakop sa NPA gi mo ang pang ransom or pang, oh yeah, pang ransom lagi or pang uh, ransom or pang, what you call that, uh, pang negotiation or barter. Then see wars like Russia versus Ukraine. So, thousands of people died many are injured and many future of the children the kids were destroyed so that's so very sad next is hazard analysis to understand the hazard one must do a hazard analysis it is identification study and monitoring of any hazard to determine its potential origin characteristic and behavior so like nowadays, mapakuan din na atong uh, mga higher official o conference. For example, na threat uh, of a storm coming to our PAR or Philippine Area of Responsibility, na yun meeting or collaboration meeting sa mga or interagency meeting uh, that will going to happen from the national level up to the local level. So all members of the uh, command uh, groups, like for example, uh, Red Cross, uh, PNP, we have also the schools, we have also DRRM of the municipality or city, Army, Philippine Army, the hospitals, they'll have a collaborative meeting before the disaster strikes. The reason for this is, one, provide descriptions of the hazard, two, help in setting priorities corresponding the needs of protection. For example, if the disaster is more on uh, sa dagat, so atong i-activate ang um, coast guard and everything, or sa mountain, atong i-activate ang mga barangay uh, emergency team, like that. Then three, assisting in designing the appropriate DRMM system plan, program, and service. So, this is a proactive way in preventing disaster or human disaster sa after the disaster reached the community or the after impact or aftermath. Here are the tools in doing hazard analysis. One, community hazards and disaster history construction. In this method, the existing hazards and the disaster that the community experience are identified. For example, ang kanibang area is a high risk for landslide because of the content or, or the quality of soil nga naasa mountain or for example kaning river 
uh, they have to check the frequency of flooding. Okay, basin kun ay greater or strong or heavy rains coming, ma easily evacuated ang population that are living beside the river. Two, hazards and vulnerable mapping. Areas in the community that are vulner vulnerable to a specific hazard are identified, then located in the map. For example, areas that become flooded at different levels, like knee deep, waist deep, chest deep, above head, are highlighted in the map of a city or town. The levels are based on the average Filipino height to feet or to five feet. Mapping is also done to identify areas that are prone to earthquakes and landslides. So, guys, during during Dan, Esti Dante last year, 2000, June, uh, na to sa kumbado, nag-uwan ka yung kusog, niambot ang tubig sa waste area. So, daghang gi evacuate o ang uban naka evacuate during naming rise ang water so na reacting ta siya so every everything happened so fast like wala wala ka jud na disseminate ang warning system nga ana day ka kusog kay they didn't expect ni ana ka kusog jud so here is the sample of the community hazard and disaster history construction. So, you have to identify also what barangay, then <clears throat> what barangay, the, the address of the barangay, the population number, pilakabok kids, pilakabok adult, pilakabok female, pilakabok nasa elderly, pilakabok ang morbid or kananay sakit. You know. On the top of the row are year, disaster, areas are affected, damages and loss. For example, 2012, this certain barangay have flood due to Habagat. Then the areas affected are 1 to 4 sitios along the river. Then the damages, 80 houses partially damaged, 1 child drowned, damaged livelihood. So you're going to make that one. So the rest are the same. Three factor analysis. This tool determines or describes the characteristic of the hazard in terms of the following A. Frequency. How often the hazard occur in a year? How many have visited that certain kind of hazard? Duration. How long does it occur? Like one day, two days? Then, like hours. C. Speed of onset. How fast does it occur upon the initial detection? So, for example, uh, there's a low pressure area uh, in a wider scale detected in the Pacific Ocean and uh, how or how long, how many hours before it reached the land or it hit the land of the Philippine area. Next is probability. I mean, before that, we have intensity, the strength or the magnitude. For example, for an earthquake, magnitude 3, 7.5, strong one, 9.5, 10, simbako. We have the storm, we have uh, signal number 1, 2, 3, 4. Then we have category one, A, B, I mean, 1, 2, 3, like that. Probability, what is the chance that it will occur. Then, F for warning, is there an adequate time to prepare upon detection? Are there signals before occurrence? So, this is the time to prove that your capacity is effective. Like, for example, uh, before a storm or before the heavy rain struck in your community, how long or yeah how long did the barangay able to transfer all the uh, members of the community from their hazard hazard located hazard located uh household or household or their 
areas of living going to the uh, evacuation center? Or how is their evacuation center uh, water or flood proof or storm proof like that? G, manageability. How manageable are the effects of the hazard? For example, uh, kumakaya ba sa inyong community if na ay level 4 na category storm mo hit sa inyong area? If kaya ba or di? Yana. So, the national or higher na mga officials or government levels will try to send help. So, here is a sample of matrix showing the factors of analysis of specific hazard. So, type of the on the first row, their type of hazard, frequency, duration, speed of onset, intensity, magnitude, probability, forewarning, manageability. For example, typhoon. So, almost monthly from June to December, the duration is three days. The speed of onset in, the speed of onset, like, how long does it take the storm to reach the landform or to reach your community for, during the time you know, first detect it? So, the landfall. Next intensity or magnitude, typhoon, signal number one or category three, like that. Probability, 80% passes through the community. For example, wala alam mo kaadyo na agian sa eye of the storm. So, mga 30% ang severity or probability. Kung naam na igudun mo sa storm, sa eye of the storm, mga 100% or 90%, like that. Next is for warming. There is enough time as the weather can be observed and monitored prior to occurrence or one hour before the landfall, naan na ba ang tanan, members sa community sa evacuation area. Then manageability. So, signal number one naman to, uh, dali ra naka-recover, tanan, kay lesser ra ang damage sa properties, damage sa badaling damage, or well, zero death like that. So, Napotay Flood, Fire, and Earthquake. Summary, the lesson discussed the following salient points. Number one, hazards are potentially damaging events that may cause injury or loss of life, damage to property, so social and economic disruption, and environmental degradation. Two, hazard analysis is the identification, study, and monitoring of any hazard to determine its potential origin, characteristic, and behavior. The basic tools in conducting a hazard analysis are A, community hazard and disaster history construction, B, hazard and vulnerability uh, mapping, and C, factor analysis. Hazard Number three, hazard can be described according to the following characteristics. A, frequency. B, duration. C, speed of onset. D, intensity. E, probability, C, forewarning, and G, manageability. Alright, performance task. So this will be an individual task. Activity 1. Penny activity 1, specifically. This is risk assessment. So on whole band paper, you have to assess your lifestyle, your home, and your community in relation to DRRM, this Disaster Risk Reduction Management using this guideline. The guideline is below, for example. Then fill it in the table that follows with details. Number one, reflect on your personal habit, practices, values, and beliefs as well as that of your family. Kamao ba sila mo CPR? Kaibaw na ba sila kung asa mo padong? If ever, na ay bagjo? Kaibaw ba sila sa mga pag-first aid? Like that. Which of them can cause harm and contribute to your vulnerability in the study? For example, ako sa naisakit, family member, naisakit. Diyan na po yung usa na nakaskwila o criminology. So, katigo na mo, kuan, katigo na mo rescue. Like that. And also, 
inspect your house for bars or areas that can be increased in susceptibility to damage or loss, like your atop. Sturdy pa ba yung atop? Makiri pa ba if another or death will come? Try to check it. Then number two, family. Go around your neighbor if you can and assess the following elements of for potential risk. Location, infrastructure, main sources of livelihood, organizations dedicated to DRRM and your community resources. For example, kung mag-meeting ang risk reduction management, mo attend ba sila kanunay? Yeah, that's for example. Number three, with the help of your family, identify ways to reduce risk that you, your household, and your community had to deal with. For example, if ever na ay bagjo, then maguba yung bay na ba mo kadaganan or na ba mo or pag rebuild for your house na ba mo family ato sa gawas ng makahelping job for rebuilding your houses or providing relief good or accessible ba ang Red Cross sa iyong community or accessible ba ang DRM sa iyong municipality or iyong barangay level or naabay mga respondents o kanamu response da sa koan sa iyong barangay or sitio every, every time na accident or disaster you have to do it in a short band paper then don't forget to label label it with your name your course level and your section so this will be submitted next monday during the report or next week during our next week na um uh, meeting activity two this is a per group community hazards and disaster history visit to your assigned barangay for your hazard and disaster history this is by group then fill the data that is asked in the table three write your data in a table form in manila paper then get ready for the report next meeting should have at least five photos during the interview as proof which will be sent through our group chat we have activity three so sumpay sa number two na activity make a factor analysis for hazard happened in your chosen barangay you may interview the captain or the members of uh the council or the people itself or themselves or mga Rulers kato mga taga barangay rapod. Then write your output in Manila paper and ready for the report. I think that will be all. But before that, for to confirm or to validate your attendance, even though we will we're not meeting face to face this week, this will be your attendance. So please write your complete name, your year level. Or comment your complete name, your year level, and your uh, course section on the comment section, ha? Huh? Then answer how many times do the eagle appeared in the slides. Again, how many times the eagle appeared in the slides. I think that will be all and see you next week. Goodbye.